Hi, I'm Scott Kane. I'm a developer at Wormbase, and uh, I'd like to talk to you about what we've been doing with genome browsers uh, over the last few months. Uh, so basically, we've implemented a new genome browser. Uh, there's a few reasons for that. One is that gbrowse, which has been around basically since the beginning of Wormbase, uh, hasn't been supported in several years and is starting to show its age in many ways. And uh, jbrowse one, which we implemented uh, in about 2015, 2016, is nice, but it has several de deficiencies, including the inability to make SVGs, uh, the inability to display multiple genomes at once, specifically displaying Synteny, the inability to show multiple regions of the same genome at once, so you could say, look at a whole genome. Uh, and it's difficult for users to make customizations. And finally, it's difficult to embed, which is uh, not that much a problem for you, but it is kind of a problem for me. So enter jbrowse2. What is it? jbrowse2 uh, was developed by the same group that developed jbrowse1. It's basically a complete ground up rewrite using modern JavaScript using React JS. It still runs entirely in the browser, so there's really not much of a server component to it. It's basically everything that's running on your computer. And it offers a lot of new functionality. So in addition to all those things that I said before that jbrowse one couldn't do, that jbrowse two can, it can do other things too, like uh, it has a structural variation inspector, which is really cool. Um, you can do uh, also hold genome comparison dot plots. Um, it has the ability to interact with Python and R, so it's, you can use it in Jupyter pages if that's the sort of thing you'd like to do. Um, and it's also uh, provides an easy to use desktop application, which I think will start to get more and more use as as time goes on. So just kind of an overview of the user interface. This is kind of what it looks like after you have a few tracks loaded up in C Elegans. Things are there. On the right hand side, you've got this panel that's right now it's got additional tracks in it, but it's basically got additional info um, track list. Uh, if you click on a feature, it will give you details about the feature there. Uh, and there's some other things that will show up on that side. Uh, it doesn't have to be there. You can close it with a little X and then you get the whole screen uh, dedicated to your genome uh, browsing. Um, additionally, the tracks can be individually resized by grabbing hold of this uh, double double line here and just sliding it up and down. You can, so you can make individual tracks bigger. You can also grab a hold of this little thingy here on the label and drag tracks around to reorder them. Um, this here is, uh, is a view menu, which has a lot of neat functionality uh, in there. Uh, you can change the way the labels are displayed. You can change, uh, you can flip the genome horizontally, um, and you can do a few other things I'll, I'll touch on as well. Up here in this file menu is mostly, mostly dedicated to sessions, which I'll talk a little bit about, and um, also the ability to add new tracks with new data of your own. Uh, the last thing I wanted to point out is this share button. Uh, basically, uh, jbrowse2 will generate a link that you can send to people that you know, is, a, is a share link, and that's really neat as well. Now, uh, for some of the things that uh, people might really wanna do, uh, creating SVG is really straightforward. That's one of those things you get in that view menu up here. And here's what the menu looks like. So one of the options there is export SVG. Uh, you select that and you get a nice little menu that says, you know, how do you want the labels to look? Um, and then you can hit submit and it'll download an SVG. And basically it works with anything you can see in jbrowse2. If you can see it, you can make an SVG of it. Um, it doesn't do like the whole page, it will do an individual view. And, and I'll show you what that means here in just a minute. Um, so basically any display type, the linear genome view is what most people see, but there's also Synteny, there's whole genome, um, you know, multiple chromosome views. Okay. And it also works regardless of where the data is. Why does that matter? Uh, so you don't upload data. It doesn't really get uploaded, it just creates, you know, just accesses the data locally, uh, which I'll talk about that in a minute too. Um, so Wormbase 2 can do Synteny and uh, comparative genomics. Basically, Wormbase uh, provides some pre-computed genome comparisons. I'll show you how you can get to those. But you can also provide your own. Uh, JBrowse supports several whole genome comparison tools outputs. So um, there's a good chance if you're doing a, a whole genome comparison, you can probably take that data and visualize it in JBrowse 2. Um, the easiest way to get at these pre-computed comparisons is from a linear genome view that looks kind of like this. So here's what the track list looks like down at the, at some section of the track list, there are these pre-computed Synteny comparisons between um, the N2 assembly and several other assemblies. Uh, and that clicking on one of those gives you a track that looks like this. And these are uh, then where there are similarities between the two genomes. So if you right click on it, you get this little menu that says, and one of the options is open a Synteny view. And when you do, it opens it, and it actually opens it in the same window kind of as a, a new frame uh, in the browser window. So up here is the window we started with, and then it opens up another section down here with the Synteny. So you don't, you don't lose the context of where you were before. 
Um, once you open this, you can open any tracks you want for either one of these genomes. Um, and you can use these buttons to zoom in and out, and you can do that uh, in sync or separately. So you can zoom in on one genome uh, and not on the other. Um, those are things that it can be configured in different ways. And the way you configure that is with this menu up here, uh, it adjusts aspects of the, the Synteny view. Okay, so here it is. I zoomed out a little bit, and this is the one that I'd started with, uh, the, the Synteny comparison that I started with. This is in another comparison. So you can see that, um, it highlights for you where there have been insertions and deletions from one genome relative to another. Other things that we can do, we can display multiple regions of a whole or a whole genome at once, basically. So I can, um, I can say show all of the show this data, this these big wigs over all of the chromosomes in the C. elegans assembly. To do that, you again select this show uh, this menu up here, and then say um, uh, show all regions from assembly, and then it just shows all of them like that. So that's that's a really nice view. Uh, I mentioned before adding your own data. Uh, JBrowse 2 supports lots of data formats. Uh, I don't have any come close to listing all of them, but the common ones are GFF and VCF, big wig, big bed, um, and several genomic comparative genomics out, um, outputs. Um, and I want to emphasize again, that data doesn't get uploaded anywhere. If you say, I want to add my own data, it just stays wherever it is. If it's sitting on your desktop, that's where it stays. If uh, you have it sitting out on a web server somewhere, that's where it stays. Um, one thing I do want to point out, though, is that if you use that share button to send somebody a URL and you've got your own data in there, you have to make sure that they have access to that data as well. So a lot of times if I'm going to be sharing a view, I will make sure that I put it, uh, the data like in uh, Amazon S3 or something like that and make sure that it's publicly available. Uh, and then you can just share it uh, however you like. Um, the way you share your own button, there's actually several ways under the file menu. Uh, there's an add your own data track and also in the track list, there's this uh, orangish yellowish button that is the add button you can use that to add track data when you do um, you choose whether or not you want it to be a url that's somewhere or a file that you have locally and uh, if it has an index associated with it like if you've tabix index a vcf file for instance um, you can specify where that is too although jbrowse is going to guess if it's if it's obvious it'll guess right usually it does because if they're in the same directory it'll just it'll figure it out um, after it does that, it will guess a name. You'll probably want to change the name. Um, and it guesses what type of thing it is. And it assumes it also guesses what assembly you want to use. It's whatever assembly you're looking at at the moment. Um, but if, you, if it guesses wrong on any of these things, you can use these drop-down menus to fix that. Um, and then once you've added your own data, you get something that looks like this. Um, and it gives you what's called a session track um, and with a name. And I can do things like edit how this session track looks by editing uh, the settings. And that opens up a little, this little menu where you can change all the things like I changed the color of the icon uh, that's representing there, representing these variants, but you can do lots of different things, including adding little bits of your own JavaScript if you wanted to say, color things differently depending on what kind of variant they are. But one thing I wanna point out is sessions, it's a, it creates a session track, I said that, um, but I wanna make sure that it's clear that session tracks disappear when the session ends. Um, so if you like close the window or click on a different JBrowse link, it will it wipes out that session. But you can save a session in this file menu and then add it back later. So if you've got a, uh, your own data and you really like the way it looks, you've, you've spent some time configuring it and it's useful data, you can save that session and then reopen it again later uh, and not have to recreate all those tracks. Uh, one last thing I wanted to touch on is saving track data. That is something that um, both JBrowse and JBrowse 1 let you do. Um, on JBrowse 2, it is still a beta feature, so it's only available on the worm-based staging site. So if you would like to access the save track data, I'm not sure when that's gonna make it into production. It will certainly be sometime this year, I don't know when. But if you look for it and it's not there, try the staging.wormbase.org uh, JBrowse 2. And then you can click on any tracks, context menu, this dot, dot, dot. And one of the options is save track data. Okay, real quick, acknowledgements. Lots of thanks to the JBrowse development team, particularly Colin Daesh, who's the lead developer and has helped with a lot of things. We've had a lot of feedback back and forth about what would be useful. Um, also, lots of thanks to the rest of the Wormbase team, team who has helped with lots of testing and suggestions for how things can look. If you have any questions uh, and we don't get them to, to them today, uh, you can always email me at uh, scott at uh, scottkane at wormbase.org or scott at scottkane.net. That's my personal email address. Or if you're on Mastodon, you can find me at scottkane at genomic.social. Thanks.